the book of Joshua, session 32. We continue with Joshua chapter 6, verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even the whole city and all that are therein, to Yahuwah. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed as well. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble, the camp of Israel. So God said nothing in the city can be taken except the uh, precious metals that will actually go into his house to um, uh, be used in the temple and in the tabernacle. The rest must be burned because remember the, the whore of Babylon, the city of Babylon, the city on seven hills, the whole serpent kingdom system that's represented by the city Babylon. Um must be burned and will be burned in the end days and we can have nothing to do with it when we walk around this serpent kingdom while we keep unleavened bread while we obey god while we hang when we are still inside we hang the the true token of god's um, sign of the red ribbon outside our window we have nothing to do with the rest of um, the precious things that belongs to the serpent's kingdom. So you touch nothing. You burn everything up to ashes. That's what we saw yesterday. Everything will be burned to ashes and we will walk out on the ashes of the whole system that is burnt by the wrath of God. Therefore, when we do, we do take, when we have some sort of connection with the cursed things remember blessing and curses we obey therefore we get we get the blessing but whoever is not within the covenant of god automatically falls under the curses so when you take over the city israel don't take or don't touch any of the cursed things but destroy it with fire not only not touching the cursed things but don't you dare Bring any of the cursed things into the camp because you will trouble the camp. You will make trouble for the camp. You'll make trouble for you, your house, your family, your business, your community and the rest of your fellow sisters and brothers who are believers. Don't have any more connection. Don't turn back to have any more connection. Don't turn back to Egypt. Don't turn back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You'll bring a curse on yourself only. Don't um, have some affection or desire for anything within the Babylonian city. But, verse 19, all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated or made holy or set apart unto Yahuwah. They shall come into the treasury of Yahuwah. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpet and it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, very important. The people shouted with a great shout, very important. So that the walls fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him bring us for this moment for such a long time and as we walked in silence around the city and being laughed at by the rest of the world eating unleavened bread while the rest of the world eats nice fluffy white bread we have been preparing for this we are willing to eat the bread of affliction to keep the feasts of Yahuwah to follow the pattern of the seven and we will with Messiah have victory over the pagan serpent system. And Yahuwah himself will rule and reign inside our camp, in the midst of us. When Yahshua comes back and he prepares the way and he rules for a thousand years. And finally, after the thousand years, Yahuwah himself with the new Jerusalem descends from heaven. And finally, his kingdom is restored on this earth.
This is what restored on this earth. This is what he is busy preparing us. And as we also will shout when he tells us to shout, not before. When he finally tells us now is the time and the trumpets blow and all the walls came, come stumbling down of this great world empire and this great king and the rulers of this world and the princes and the kings of this world. When all their walls that they have built up and all their towers finally come crumbling down, you will know that it was worth your time and worth your while and worth your life to believe this God in Hebrew it's a man to a man this God in everything that he prophesied prophesied and promised and a man is what we say after we pray amen so when we really pray and we we believe the God who we pray to and we believe every word that he has said then we say Amen. All of us who are man, all of us who believe, we pray and we say Amen. And we go through difficult times and we say Amen. And we go through preparation and we say Amen. And finally we will see the fulfillment of all the prophecies and promises and we will say Amen. And who is Amen? Aleph, Mem, Nun. Aleph is strong. Mem is water. Nun is is life. Aman, amen, means the strong living waters who is Yeshua. So our belief in this God is through the strong living waters. It's through the word of God that became flesh. Through the word of God that became flesh. It's through this word that we obey and love and follow that everything will finally be fulfilled. We continue verse 21. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. Just like when Yeshua comes back, the man on the white horse with a two-edged sword in his hand, he will destroy every man, woman and child that is not in covenant with him. But he's outside of the covenant that is rebellious or ignorant or disobedient to the covenant. That has signed covenant with the Antichrist that is wearing the mark of the beast and that has chosen to listen to the serpent and eat the fruit of the knowledge of the tree. Ah, that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Just like that, two men that have spied out the country go into Rahab's house. Finally, bring her out. Yay! Bring her out. She wasn't brought out before God's judgment fell upon the city. That's why two trees does not support the pre-rapture theory. And that's why two trees does not preach health and wealth and prosperity. Because the walls will come tumbling down around us. Our Aman Believe and faith in God must endure to the end. And then he shall rescue us. Go into the harlot's house. Bring out the woman and all that she has. As you have sworn unto her. And the young men, men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father, her mother, her brothers and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. So they took them out of the mayhem and war and battle and they took them to the camp. And they burned the city with fire and all that was in it, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron that put into the treasury of the house of Yahuwah. So remember... Even the um, gold and silver and brass, although the pagans use it to make their idols and they use it, all these precious metals that God has crea created, the, the pagans and the serpent system use that for false God. But originally it was created for God's treasury. It has originally been created for to show 
God's beauty in his temple, in his tabernacle, it's also something that can survive fire. Everything in the city is cursed. All the pagan idols are cursed, of course. But when everything is cleansed by fire, God then can take back his original intention for what he created the precious metals for. Just like the sun. Listen. Once we learn about the sun god traditions in Egypt and Babylon and we come out of that, we hate everything that has a sun symbol and everything reminds us of the sun god system. But yet the sun comes up every morning and we can turn our faces towards the sun, not being sun god worshippers. But the moment you turn your face to the sun, you immediately... Um, reminded of how the people in the Bible have turned their faces to the sun and worshipped the sun and turned their backs on God. Faces to the sun and worshipped the sun and turned their backs on God. But originally God created the sun as his glory, as his clock. Every morning the sun comes up, every evening it goes down. It shows us the 12 hours of the day. It shows us the seasons and the months and the years. And we we look at the sun and we worship God because originally he created the sun to show how reliable God's creation is. His seven day cycle, his feast days and his seasons, winter, summer, fall and spring. And we look at the sun and we are reminded that he's reliable. He commanded the sun 6,000 years ago to shine during the day and it comes up every morning and I'm reminded father you are relationship you when I look at your son and so also the precious metals gold and silver and brass is used all through the tabernacle and we've spent many weeks together in the study of the tabernacle looking at all the precious metals and how they represent brass represents judgment gold represents the torah silver represents redemption do you remember all that god created the precious metals for his honor and glory and for his treasury and that's why the precious metals is now taken out of the city of fire and brought into the treasury of God. And this reminds me of how our works will also be tested by fire. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than the foundation that is already laid, and that is Messiah, Yeshua. Now is Messiah, Yeshua. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation of Messiah, which is the Torah, this foundation, which is the rock, the rock of the Old Testament. If you build upon this rock, gold, silver, precious stones, or you build wood, hay and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for that day shall declare it because that day will come by fire, the judgment day. God's day of testing and your work on the foundation of Messiah shall be tested by fire and the fire shall try and test every man's work of what sort it is. If your work has been gold, silver and precious stones, it will remain through the fire because gold and silver, that's why we accept the the refiner's fire. We accept the trials and tribulation of fire because we know that God is purifying his bride. Daniel 11, Malachi 4, he is t oh, Malachi 3. He is testing us and, and burning the, the rubble and the rubbish away out of his precious metals so that he can use it in his kingdom. But if we build on, on the foundation wood, hay and stubble, wood, hay and stubble will be burned up to ashes together with the rest of the world and God's people will walk on the ashes of that gold and silver cannot burn in fire to ashes but wood hay and stubble and all that is not marked by God will burn to ashes because the day of fire 
shall test it. Just like here at Jericho. You'll burn the city to ashes, but you'll bring out burn the city to ashes, but you'll bring out out the, the precious metals. But can, isn't it amazing? Thank you, Father, for showing me this just now. What did they bring out of the city? The whore and her family. But the whore and her family is precious in the eyes of God, like precious metals. God brought out the precious metals that he didn't destroy in the fire. Just like that, Rahab is precious to him. And he brought her out because she is gold, silver, and precious stones to him. God brings us out his whoring bride that he had to divorce and wants to be betrothed again. He brings us out of the rubbish and the rubble and the stubble and the wood and the hay that will be burned up in this world. He brings us out of that system because we are precious to him. We are, uh, the prophet Zechariah chapter 9 verse 16. This is all about Yahuwah that will save his people, Yeshua. And Yahuwah their Elohim shall save them, Yeshu, in that day. Which day? The day that he will come with his fire to devour. I mean, look at this, Zechariah 9.14. Yahuwah shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. Can you see how the trumpet is also the day of shouting is also the day of judgment is also the day of fire is also the day of the destruction of the city is also the redemption of his precious metals his people so he will blow the trumpet and his arrows goes forth as lightning and Yahuwah of hosts Yahuwah Tsefaot and Yahuwah of hosts Yahuwah Tsefaot shall defend them and they shall devour and they will win with sling stones like David they shall drink and make a noise as through the wine and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar oh wow this verse can keep us busy for the next 10 hours this is amazing subdue with sling stones drink as with wine be filled like bowls and and the corners of the altar on the corners of the altar comes the blood of the Pesach lamb and of the Yom Kippur lamb. Oh, this is so amazing. But then, verse 16, Yahuwah the Elohim shall save them in that day. In that day that he destroys everything else, his people shall be saved as the flock of his people. For, listen to this now, they shall be as the precious stones of a crown upon his land in the crown of what is the that we always sang in sunday school um what is that song we always sang in sunday school as i weer kom as i weer kom kom haal i sy parels al sy parels fraaie parels verhiese se kroon al die kinder Gesigis, soos die stare siligis. Have you ever sang that song in Sunday school? We are the precious metals and the pearls that he saves out of the burning city. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 17. Uh, let's start with verse 16. Then they that fear Yahuwah spoke often one to fear Yahuwah, spoke often one to another. And Yahuwah heard it. He hears when we speak to one another about him because we fear him. We love him. We know he's a God of judgment and we repent of our sins because we fear him. We are going to fall under the wrath of the death penalty, but we love him because he died he made a plan for us so that we can come out from under the judgment. We fear him. We speak to one another about him. He hears us. And a book of remembrance was written before Yahuwah for them that fear Yahuwah and that thinks and meditates upon his name. Beautiful. And what are, what, what are these people now called? Listen to this. 
These people shall be mine, says Yehovah Tzifot. Yehovah Tzifot is Yeshua. In that Yehovah Tzifot is Yeshua. In that day, which day? When I burn the world with fire. In that day when I make up my jewels, when I take up my precious stones, I will spare them. I will spare them. Beautiful. And he takes his precious stones and that is what makes his crown. Oh, this is amazing. Joshua, we learn so much from you. And Joshua, back to chapter 6 verse 25 saved Rahab the harlot alive <laughs> and Yeshua saves all the harlots alive and her father's household and all that she had and she dwelt in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua spy out Jericho and we know Rahab not only lived inside the camp not only became um, a Hebrew but she became a Jew. She was taken into the house of Judah. And she was the great, great something grandmother of David. And of course, she is in the bloodline of King David's son. The eternal king on the throne of David. Messiah himself. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying, Cursed be the man before Yahuwah that rises up and builds the city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof <laughs> in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. This is quite sad and bad. Whoever tries to build up the serpent city kingdom Babylon system again will do so on the corpse of his son. So Yahuwah was with Joshua, and his fame was noised. Throughout all the country. Fantastic. The fame of Joshua. The fear of Joshua. The reputation of Joshua. Was noised. Shouted. Talked about. All throughout the land of Canaan. So it is with Yeshua. The name above all names. Because in the name of Yeshua. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That he is the master Yeshua, Yahuwah our Savior, and his fear and reputation and fame shall be noised all over the country. As the waters fill the oceans, as the waters fill the earth, so shall the glory of Yahuwah fill the earth. Beautiful. Now this, this salvation of Rahab, this salvation of Rahab is an amazing story for us because we are all Rahabs. And the glory of Yeshua, of Joshua, that is noise throughout the world, is, um, is true. And we say amen to this. We believe it. He is the strong living waters. And through him, the captain of the army of hosts that, that taught Joshua how to make war, through him, he teaches us to make war. And his reputation shall fill the whole earth. But also the warning that God gave, um, cursed be the man um, that touches any of the cursed things inside the city. So we're going to look at chapter 7. We're going to look at Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah. And I'm going to teach it difficult. It's a very difficult teaching because it touches... On the new order of the world government system that is run by Achan, which is from the house of Judah. And there are certain things that I cannot say um, in the same sentences. And I'm going to have to need you guys to concentrate and also try to understand what I'm saying I will give you the clues because if I say these things in the same sentences um, this ministry will be blocked from Facebook and from YouTube 
And out of scripture, we're going to learn the world system of today. And from the beginning today, and from the beginning, God explains and declares the end. And if we don't understand the beginning and the foundations of the serpent system, we will not recognize the false gods and the false leaders and the beast and the Antichrist that pretends to be angels of light and pretends to be Messiah himself. And we will not recognize the wolves in sheep's clothing. We will not recognize the satanic governments um, of our days. But we will, we will start with that tomorrow because remember, just remember today's teaching. Everything inside the city is cursed. You don't bring it into the house of God or into the camp or you don't touch it because then you'll be cursed and you'll bring trouble to Israel. Right? And you don't try to build Jericho again. You don't. Right? And you don't try to build Jericho again. You don't try to bring this Babylonian Nimrod Tower of Babel, confusion, mixed religion, mixed genetics, mixed seed, mixed um, gods, mixed words, half true and half lie, fruits from the tree of knowledge, serpent system. You don't try to build a city again. And yet, besides the warnings of God that if you do that, you will lay the foundation on the corpse of your firstborn and your youngest son shall be his body shall be in the foundations of the gate. Don't try to set up the Babylonian system again. And yet, years later, we read in 1 Kings 16. <sighs> now remember, Achan, Achan, the guy that um, that touches the accursed things of Jericho. He was from the house of Judah. In 1 King 16, Ahab, King Ahab, Kuning Ahab, King Ahab, he reigns in Israel. In the 38th year of Asa, King of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. So he's, he's a royal, he's the royalty. He is um, from the royal um, lineage. He is pretending to be a Jew because Israel wasn't supposed to have a king. David was the king over the whole house of Israel when the kingdom of Israel was still restored. And the house of Judah and the house of Israel didn't split up yet. But as we continue reading, we, we see how the two houses split. And the ten northern tribes went north. And they were called Israel. And the two southern tribes stayed in Jerusalem. And they called um, the house of Judah. So during the reign of King Asa, who reigned over Judah in the south, King um, Ahab, Ahab pretended because Israel wasn't supposed to be split off. They were supposed to have one king over them. So for me, the, the splitting of the, of the kings, King Ahab is the Jew that says he's a Jew but he's not. Ahab is the Jew that says he's a Jew but he's not. He's from the synagogue of Satan. Just like we see in the end days in the book of Revelation, God is forever talking about the Jews that call themselves Jews, but they're not. They're from the synagogue of Satan. So this king Ahab is pretending to be a king. He's not supposed to be king. The, the kings did not come from any other tribe but the tribe of Judah. But nevertheless, here we have this pagan king over the house of Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, above all the other kings that were before him. Can you see how Ahab 
who is supposed to be the king over the ten lost tribes, is doing evil, more evil than even all the other kings before him. But not only did he do more evil than even all the other but not only did he do more evil than even all the other kings, although they have the Torah, although they have the temple, the tabernacle, they have the Ark of the Covenant, they have the priests, they have the prophets, they have the words of God. Besides all that, he still did evil in the eyes of God. But Ahab, setting up the Babylonian system within the kingdom of God. Listen to this, because the Babylonian system, just like the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is not out there somewhere. It's inside the Garden of Eden. Ah. The Babylonian system is not out there within the pagans. King Ahab brought it into God's kingdom. Because the true whore of Babylon, and we can look at this later when we discuss that in more detail. The true whore of Babylon is called Jerusalem. Jerusalem becomes in the end days, she's the whore. Because yeah, look at what Ahab does, prophesying. How he brings the whore of Babylon, Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians. And together with Jezebel, besides the other evil that Ahab did, he brought the, the Babylonian Jezebel whore. Her father's name is Eth Baal. She's Th Baal and she teaches Baal worship not only to her husband, the king, through her lust and her sexual inclinations and her prostitution at the Baal and Ashtoreth temples. But she brings the whole of Israel into Baal and Ashtoreth worship. Do you remember Elijah on Mount Carmel? He killed 400 of her, of Jezebel's priests, Baal priests. And he even went as far to kill 400 of her Ashtoreth priests, which I think was women. He, he slew them with his sword. And then remember that amazing story. Maybe, you know, go look at the Pesach. Maybe, you know, go look at the Pesach 2022 study of two trees in the garden on, on YouTube. The amazing story. How Elijah then got so tired and he wanted to commit suicide. And Jezebel was persecuting him. This Baal system was persecuting him. Amazing story. But, but yeah. King Ahab is bringing, is setting up Baal worship, sun god worship within the camp of God, within the house of God. And that's exactly what's happening in these last days. Even inside the house of Judah and inside the house of Israel, Baal worship is still the greatest deception. That is why we see Baal worship Inside the churches, that's why you came out of Egypt and Babylon, because you saw the Baal worship inside. Like to build Jericho up again, but inside this setting up of the Baal system within the camp of Israel, what the heck did they do? Look at this. Verily, verily, I say to you, I cannot believe how from all the times that they decided to set up Jericho again, they did it at the same time that Ahab and Jezebel set up Baal worship within God's people. 1 Kings 16 verse 32 And Ahab reared up 
an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. Can you see that instead of the house of God, they built a house of they built a house of Baal. Instead of the altar of God, they put up an altar for Baal. And I have made a grove. He planted trees. That's where the Christmas tree comes comes from. He made a grove. And I have did even more to provoke Yahuwah, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. I have did so many things. He did all this evil. Then he did more by marrying Eth Baal's princess Jezebel. Then he did even more. He built a house for Baal. Then he did even more. He built an altar for Baal. He did even more. He, he, he planted a whole grove. Mysterious groves. You know Bohemian Grove? You know about all this worship within the trees? Custom. In his days. Whose days? Ahab's days. Did he howl? The Bethelite built Jericho. He howl? The Bethelite laid the foundation of Jericho in Abiram, his firstborn. Ah! He howl? The Bethelite set up the gates of Jericho in his youngest son, Zegub. According to the word of Yahuwah that he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. These people, like God said, doesn't have a problem to worship by um, sacrificing their own children. Now this guy, he howl. Look at this um, sacrificing their own children. Now this guy, he howl. Look at his name in the Strongs. It's Gial. Gial. Strongs H2419. It means living of God. Chayim El. Gial. Living of God. The life of God. How dare a man with this name go and be rebellious against this God. And he brought up Jericho again together with Ahab bringing up the Baal system with Jezebel. And together Israel now does not worship the living El. They worship another El. Another above the life of their God. And this man, the false God, the false li- life of El, he El, he goes and he and he builds up Jericho. And um, Jericho is laid; the foundation thereof is laid in his son Abiram, his firstborn. Abiram means father of height. Father of height, Ab Abba, father. And um, Iram height. So they want to build high, just like the Tower of Babel. They want to build it high on a false foundation. Remember, we said if we build on another foundation than the foundation of God, which is the rock, which is Yeshua, the living Torah, it will be burned up in the day of fire. fire. And he laid the gates in his youngest son. Segup, Segup. Let's see what Segup means. A loft. Um, sagap, it's from the primitive root. Sagap, to be lofty, to be high, to make yourself strong, to make yourself safe, like a strong hold or like a tower, to be safe, to be set up on high, to be strong on high. You see, how this whole ball system, because that's why Lucifer says, I will be higher than the stars, 
the angels of God. I will sit on the throne of God. I will make my throne in the north. Ach, all these things are so interconnected. And keep all this in mind when we start t- tomorrow, when we start looking at the cursed things of Jericho.